Get out of the pants. Get out of the girl. Well, you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. And when it comes to Santee Cooper Lake, you realize that we have to go back in a time vault to the inaugural season of the Bassmaster Elite Series 2006. Yeah. And the man of that tournament, the man of the hour, was Preston Clark. 115 pounds, 15 ounces for four days of fishing. Broke the century mark. And we're happy to have Preston join us. Uh, it's been a long time, no see. And now we get to talk to you, the record holder for a little bit there at the Century Club. Preston, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So Preston, it's been a long time. Obviously you started out on the Elite Series and you made your mark pretty quick, busting the Century Club at Santee Cooper. It's during the spawn, so it was an incredible week of fishing. Was it probably the best week of fishing you've ever had in your life? Uh, I've had some really, really good tournaments down in Florida, but it's certainly one that, that stands all by itself. So for you, you, you busted out of the gate immediately, 39 pounds and change on the first day of fishing. And you had to know, hey, do I need to keep that pace for the rest of the week? Or is it going to, am I able to catch mid twenties and still be okay? I really, I didn't think I had enough. Uh, I caught uh, two nines and a six on my first three cast of the tournament. And I didn't think that I had enough because I didn't catch the biggest fish I was looking at. Mm -hmm. There she is. Come on, girl, come out of there. Come out of there. Stay on, stay on. Stay on. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I think this is okay. That is incredible. And so, Preston, it's obviously going to be an interesting year. COVID and, and the virus and everything has delayed the Elite Series season. We were primed up for Santee Cooper in April when it was going to be the spawn, but now it's in October. What are these Elite Series pros going to face when they go to a place like Santee Cooper early fall in South Carolina? I believe that the you know, it's going to be, they're going to be feeding up for wintertime. There's been a lot of rain over the, over the last several months. So I believe that those fish are either going to go way back up in the trees or they're going to find a hard bank that you can't go any further back, like a seawall or a bulkhead or something of that nature. Um, they're, they're going to go shallow. Usually when the water comes up, the fish go shallow. You can look to see a, a frog bite. I'm, I'm thinking that a frog bite will, will be a, uh, a good pattern in this upcoming tournament. So Preston, when we were there in 2006, you broke the record. It had to be something incredible. It was a perfect storm. Those fish, you know, spawning situations, that's in your, in your wheelhouse. And for Santee Cooper, it's one of those places that pumps it out. Is it gonna be one of those things where we only see maybe Lake Marion play? Or do you think Lake Moultrie will have an effect as well? I know a lot of, I know you stuck in the main lake not far from takeoff, but is that, do, are we gonna see the full playing field of Santee come into play or do you think it'll just be those predominant historical areas? No, it'll be, the, it'll be both lakes. There'll be fish to be caught on the upper lake and the lower lake. It won't just be uh, just the swamp or it won't be angels or blacks or any of those. Uh, There'll be there'll be fish to be caught everywhere. So when we're watching the footage back of that 2006, you probably don't even have to put it put it on your computer screen, and you can just relive it. You already know what that footage looks like. But growing up watching that footage, it was one of the premier tournaments of my era. Growing up watching it, you guys obviously. Uh, <laughs> dialed it in and figured it out big time. For the folks who are watching that, what was it like living that week for Preston Clark? Experiencing it, seeing that tournament develop from start to finish. It was a special week. I got very little sleep. I was up, uh, I ran my batteries so dead every day in practice that I had another set of batteries in my hotel room charging all day that I would switch my batteries out every night. Uh, because they just couldn't recoup, they couldn't recover overnight, and I, I, that was another thing that I had to do every night. But I didn't, I didn't sleep at all. Um, the final day, I was so tired that I was lucky to catch what I caught. She's a good fish. She's not great, but she'll go, she goes about four, I guess. Both the bucks are about four pounds piece. I'll come back on them in a few minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's both of them. They're side by side. Well, you mentioned that final day, and that's something that 
Angler of the Year leaders, and they never want to talk about the Angler of the Year race. Tournament leaders, they never want to talk about it. Record breakers, they're like, no, let's not talk about it until it happens. Mm -hmm. That final day, you were like, I only need 16 pounds to break the century mark record that at the time, uh, and then I need more to even win it. And for a while there, it took you, it took you a good while on that final day. Then you hit that 16 pound mark, and then from there you caught that one or two extra fish at the end, and you had 116 pounds basically for four days. For you, you were bold about it. I'm gonna break the century mark, I'm gonna break the record, and I'm gonna try to win this event. Yeah! It's gonna be close. It's gonna be so close. I knew that uh, my number one goal was to win the tournament. Yeah, I think so. I knew that if I was to win the tournament, I was gonna break the record. Dean Rojas asked me the night before the the final day, I saw him at a at a sandwich shop, and he asked me flat out. He said, "Are you gonna you gonna break my record?" And I said, "Dean, I'm on so many fish. I'm gonna have to really mess up not to." There, there were just that many fish pulling up. I don't see them. Yeah, they're there. Yeah, and she's nosing up on it too. Get out of them pads. Get out of there, girl. Get out of them pads. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. Easy. 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 Yeah! Now it's mine! So, four days of competition, 20 fish total. What do you think that winning weight should be in the fall? I know those fish that you caught are still there. They're still big. They still have giants in Santee Cooper, but it's not the premier time to go there and visit that fishery. But is it still going to take that 18 to 20 pounds a day, possibly, to, to have a shot to win? Absolutely. I'm going to say a little better than 20 a day. It's going to take, I'm going to say four days, it's going to take somewhere around the 85-pound mark. That's incredible. Well, hey, Preston Clark, it's been great to get in a time machine with you a little bit. 115 pounds, 15 ounces, the 11th highest weight in Bassmaster history for a four-day event. Incredible. Thanks for joining us, Preston. Thank you, Ronnie. That's Preston Clark, the 2006 Bassmaster Elite Series champion at Santee Cooper. Broke the record at the time. We might not reach that uh, at Santee Cooper this time around, but it should be a great fishery. And we're going to be able to talk to one Elite Series pro who's nearby, proximity-wise, to Santee Cooper, and that's Patrick Walters. Patrick, how are you? Ronnie, I am doing great, and it's a, it's a good conversation when you're talking about Santee Cooper, especially when Bassmaster is involved. Are you going to make the final day day four at Santee Cooper this year? And if so, how will you get it done? How should Santee fish in October compared to April? That's, that's a very good question. I really hope so. I make the, the fourth and final day, and I'm fishing that I'm in contention to win the tournament. But this year, we would have needed 100 pounds. It would have took 25 pounds a day to win. The October bite, it is a little tougher. Right now, it's going to take like, still probably 21 pounds a day to win. Um, I think 17 pounds to do good, 15 pounds will be in the hunt. But it's there's going to be a lot of fish caught. There's a lot of fish in the lake. But um, just the, the local advantage isn't as, as big of a thing there. I mean, there's a lot of fish in the lake, a lot of big fish. But we just got to go fishing and not burn too much water up. Well, if, and not fish too much history. History will bite you on Santee Cooper. Well, and, and people probably think about Santee Cooper, and if they've never been to the low country of South Carolina, they don't know. They think it's probably just one big lake or like a Lake Okeechobee. It's one it's one fishery, but Santee Cooper is made up of two places, Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie, uh, takeoffs out of Lake Marion. What do you expect that to be like? You got that canal that connects the two. Will there be fish and fishable water in both of them that the Elite Series anglers should find and, and be able to use, or is it not worth the risk to make that run to Moultrie? Absolutely. Both lakes are great lakes to fish. There's both Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie. I mean, I think it's like 117,000 acres combined, so the two bodies of water combined are massive. I mean, it, it, it takes a lot of time to break those two bodies of water down. I think Lake Marion's gonna play mostly. I think majority of the fish are gonna get caught out of there. There's gonna be some fish get caught out of Lake Moultrie, but I don't think it's gonna be consistent. There's some really good fish in the lower lake in Lake Moultrie, but 
the upper lick has just been the consistent one in the last couple of years. And you say consistent one overall the last couple of years, but October is like a time where consistency or the word consistent is the is the word of the week. Like who can be consistent? Will we see a 27, 28, 29, maybe 30 pound bag? And then, and then the leader that does that catch 12 the next day and then tries to find that rhythm going into the weekend. That is the fall on Santee Cooper. That is going to be how the, t the tournament is going to is going to play out. I 100%. I'm not going to be surprised if somebody weighs in 29 pounds. There's a lot of big fish in Santee Cooper. I'm telling you, it's it's got some of the biggest fish in the lake of anywhere in the country that I've ever been to. I mean, it just gives me chill bumps thinking about those big fish. But it'll be somebody will probably have 25 pounds one day, and then a 14 pounds, and then maybe 17, and then 12, and then it'll it will average out. I don't think anybody's going to go out there and like you said, knock 18 in a day, four days in a row. Just the fall fishing. The fish are moving, things are changing, the weather conditions, you know, it's a big body of water. I think you will see some big bags and some big fish really get caught in October. For Santee compared to April when the spawn is on to October, what bait should fans be able to see on Bassmaster Live to, to learn from? Because this is going to be a great uh, couple weeks span on the elites to be able to learn and watch these pros really show it rather than it just being a catch fest where anybody could go out there and throw a bait in the water and catch a, a six or seven pounder. Absolutely. You know, the, this is the one thing that I love about fall fishing, where if it was springtime, everybody would be throwing wacky worm and stick baits and stuff like that. Where right now, it's a junk fishing tournament. I'm, I can promise you that you'll see the same baits at Gunnersville, Chickamauga, and Santee Cooper. All three lakes, all three tournaments will have majority of the same baits in the top 10. There'll be a lot of people throwing a buzz bait, a top water, maybe a little bit of cranking. Somebody's going to be flipping a jig, a frog. Um, somebody will be flipping it's going to be typical fall fishing covering a lot of water just getting your bait in front of those fish and just keeping that trolling motor on high that's fall fishing in a nutshell and that's what i love to do five rods and you're going to be in good shape for the next three tournaments is there a water temperature that's really going to be like okay this is going to be a much more of a slug fest than i thought or oh it's still going to be a little too hot and tough i'm going to say 68 degrees if it can drop 10 more degrees in the next week and a half, I think it would get lights out. Well, Patrick Walters, appreciate you dropping some insight on us about Santee Cooper, Lake Mary and Lake Moultrie. I, I got to get used to saying that it's not one big lake. It's two different lakes. We'll get to see both of them in play. I know you have probably the most knowledge of anyone in the field there, but it's been a long time since a Bassmaster Elite Series event has been there. We look forward to it. Thank you for taking the time and breaking down the lake a little bit for us. Absolutely, Ronnie. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to get there. A tournament hasn't been there in a while. But I can promise you, we're still going to showcase the fishery. Well, that's Patrick Walters, second year Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, local to the Santee Cooper, the low country region of South Carolina. He should be one to watch as we make that swing for our final couple events of the season.